Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be continuing talking about uh, teaching in China and getting your FBI background check and authenticating all your documents. Uh, I want to start with the FBI background check portion because it should be a pretty quick topic. It's relatively simple and it doesn't take that long. And then wrap it up with the authentication of the documents. Um, because that's where the bulk of your headache is going to be coming from is authenticating all those documents. But with the FBI background check, so like I said, it's pretty simple. You can do it directly through the FBI. You can get on the internet, go through their website, find their authentication page. And I'll try to put a link to this in the description, but you can go directly through them. All you're going to need to do is fill out their application form and go get your fingerprints done. And I got my fingerprints done at a jail and it was I mean, it's pretty simple. You just go in there, tell them that you need that for a background check and they'll fingerprint you and you can get out of there. And I think they're supposed to charge like $5 or something, but they didn't charge me, which was sweet. Um, but expect some kind of charge, I think. Um, but here's here's the kicker is that I've I read a lot of reviews online and, and watched a lot of stuff on YouTube. And people talking about this were acting like if you go directly through the FBI, you'll it could take up to three months to get your uh, to get your background check back. And I could not wait three months. Um, so they give you another option, which is going through a third party. And the, the FBI actually recommends uh, they have a list of third parties that they recommend you go through, and this will significantly speed up the process. So I went through one of those. I can't remember the exact one uh, that I did use, but I did the same process. You get your fingerprints, you fill out an application form, and you mail it off to them, and they process same day. So they got it uh, maybe a couple days later, processed it, shipped it back to me, and within a week, I had the FBI background report back. So this part's not that stressful. I just uh, recommend that you go through one of those third parties, just make sure it's going to be done quickly. Because uh, you really do not want to be sitting there waiting around three months to get your background report uh, back. And the, the school that's hiring you doesn't want to wait around that long either. So now you've got all of your documents uh, and you're ready to get those authenticated with the Chinese embassy. And this is where the process really uh, took a turn for the worse for me and really started driving me crazy and still is to this day. I was going to wait until I had finished the entire process to do this video, but... Uh, one of the steps is taking forever, and so I figured I'd go ahead and do the video because uh, I know all the steps you're supposed to take now. So having said that, what you're going to want to do for China, because there are two different things you can do. You can get an apostle or you can get just an authentication through U.S. Secretary of State and then through the embassy. Now with China specifically, you cannot get an apostle. They're not one of the member states of the, I forget what the name of it is, um, but they're not, there's a, an organization that if these country, the country you're going to is a member of that organization, then you can just get it apostilled through the secretary of state and then you're good to go. But with China specifically, you can't do that because they're not one of those member nations. So you're going to have to get that authenticated through a different process. And their process, now here's a great resource for this, is the Chinese embassy. You can go onto their website and they give you the steps to take to get your documents authenticated. And this is a phenomenal resource. And I didn't find it until halfway through. And I wish I had it at the beginning. But I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So you take your documents. And the first step to authentication is you need to get them notarized. So you find a notary in your county and you can go to your bank. Probably that's where you're going to want to go for, uh, I'm not really going to get into it. I couldn't go to my bank. So I had to find a different notary and you go there, you get your documents notarized. Then you take those to the county clerk in that same county and get that notary authenticated. So they're going to say, okay, this notary is licensed, is a legit notary, his or her license is not expired, and this is still good to go. Then they give you that documentation of that. You take that and you send it to the U.S. Secretary of State in your state, and you have to fill out an application form and tell them that you want these documents authenticated. They're going to put their stamp on that and send those documents back to you. And this whole process is pretty quick. So you can get it notarized in... Uh, notarized, 
authenticated and mailed off all in one day. Then the U.S. Secretary of State, they process and mail it back to you within three days, I think. So it's pretty quick. And I think this whole part of it only took me about a week and I had those documents back. This is when it gets a little bit confusing. And I'll try to uh, put this in the least confusing way possible, but it's still a little bit confusing. At this point, you have two options. I don't technically have two options, uh, but I'll get into that. Okay, so you can take all those documents and you can do it the short way. There's a bunch of different embassies, Chinese embassies in the United States, and they cover different regions of the United States. So for me, the embassy that covered my region, uh, I'm in Alabama. The embassy that would have covered Alabama was the Houston one. And the Houston one is actually closed right now. So I couldn't go to them and finish up the process. I tried emailing and calling and messaging some of these other embassies to see if I could just go straight to a different one. Like maybe the Chicago embassy had acquired those states in the Southeast that the Houston embassy was over. Couldn't, never got message back or anything. So I had to take the other option. But I recommend if you can just go straight to the embassy that's over your region. It's going to be a it's going to be a lot quicker. So what you have to do if you can't do that option is you take your documentation and you mail it because they don't let you come there in person. Mail those documents to the the US Secretary of State in Washington DC. Now you can get on their website and they have an authentication um, section of their website where it tells you the steps you're going to have to take to mail this off. You go on there, you fill out the form. There's a special form you have to fill out, DS uh, something. You fill out that, print it out, fill it out, send the documents to them. They authenticate that for a fee. I think it's $8 per document. Then they're going to mail that back to you. Now, once you have those documents back, which I'm still waiting on them to come back, and it's been over a month, and on their website they say uh, it usually takes 12 days from the point where they receive your documents to get all that process done, authenticated, and shipped back to you. But they also say that right now due to COVID, it's spec delays. Well, I mailed this off over a month ago, and I still haven't received anything back. So I tried to call them and uh, went through the, the proper numbers you know the the directory and directed me to a desk so i could talk to somebody and basically it was just a recording saying that nobody works the desk right now because of also because of covid so uh i'm just sitting dead in the water right now just waiting on something to happen getting my documents back well once you get those documents back and hopefully uh, it's a lot quicker for you but once you have those then now you have to take those in person to the chinese embassy and the U.S. Secretary of State wouldn't let me go in person, and they claim because of COVID. So now the Chinese embassy, they won't let you mail it in also because of COVID, which doesn't make any sense. It's a little contradictory, but I guess, I mean, they're the Chinese, we're the Americans, we do things a little bit different. <laughs> but so now because of COVID, you can't mail it here. You have to physically go there. So you get your documents back and you take them up to the Chinese embassy and finally, they're going to sign off on everything and authenticate it. Now, once you have that done, you take those documents and you take a photo of them and you send it to the school that's going to be hiring you. They can finish up the paperwork on their end and get you that uh, visa. And then you can go over to China and start your teaching overseas. But bring those documents with you when you go over to China. And that pretty much covers it. Uh, just to do a quick review, because I know that's super confusing. I don't, for me, when I was first getting into this, I was just like, what is even going on? What is a notary? <laughs> I was so confused and nobody had any answers. So it was driving me crazy. So to review, uh, the FBI, FBI background check, really simple process. You can get on the internet, go through a third party. So you make sure it's processed and done quickly. And then uh, you get your, um, your fingerprints, fill out the form, send it off to that third party. That's going to be pretty quick, them getting that back to you. Then you take all of your documents that need authentication, go to a notary, get the notary to sign off on it saying it's a legit document, take that to the county clerk's office. They're going to say the notary is legit. Then you take the, all those documents, send it to the U.S. Secretary of State in your state, 
they're going to sign off on it and say, yes, the notary is legit. This county clerk's office, this is an actual, the real document. They send that back to you. And at that point, you have your two options. And if you can go to the embassy that is over your region of the United States, if you can't do that, you're going to have to mail your documents to the U.S. Secretary of State. They're going to authenticate it, send it back to you. Now you take it physically to the Chinese embassy, and finally you're done with the authentication process. This whole thing for me has been going on for, oh gosh, uh, two, three months, the whole process probably. Um, so yeah, pretty big headache, but I'm almost done. And, and another quick thing I didn't really touch on was each step is going to have a fee associated with it. So if you go to the notary that's not at your bank, you're going to have to pay a small fee. Then you go to the county clerk's office, you're going to have to pay a fee. Then you send that to the U.S. Secretary of State, you're going to have to pay a fee. Get that back. The U.S. Secretary of State in Washington, D.C. is going to want a fee. And then I'm sure the Chinese embassy is going to want a fee. And they're all, they range from, I don't know, 5 to $25. But it's going to add up to well over $100 for sure. So just be uh, ready for that headache as well. But thanks for watching, guys. God bless. I hope this helped you with this whole process i know for me it was super confusing but i hope this helped if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section i'd love to help out if i can i uh, wanted to make this video because it was so confusing for me and i wanted to uh, maybe help alleviate some of that confusion for you guys but thanks for watching god bless and i'll see you guys in the next video